I've been working towards a vegetarian enchilada pie recipe for the sun oven for quite a while. I'm trying to recreate a flavor remembered from early childhood, and that's a tricky thing to do, but I think I finally found a recipe that's there. I do believe my main challenge was the sauce. I don't care for any of the enchilada sauces that I found ready-made. So this one is a from scratch version made the day before in the sun oven. Here's the recipe. One finely chopped onion, one finely chopped elephant garlic clove, and 10 finely chopped pepper dues. I think any lightly spicy spe pepper would be fine. But Pepidou is the one that thrived in our garden this year. You pick the red ones from this little tree-looking thing, really. It's over three feet tall and three feet wide, and it's been wildly productive. The peppers are both sweet and lightly spicy. I did this part of the recipe indoors on the stove in a skillet. If you had a little more patience, certainly the sautéing can be done in the sun oven. So here are the ingredients up to now. There were up to three tablespoons of olive oil to use for sautéing. Sautéed to the point where the peppers, onions, and garlic were soft and the onions were becoming clear, and then added the tomato sauce, chipotle powder, cumin, chili powder, a little bit of salt, a can and a half, that's the tomato sauce can of water, and three grinds of pepper. The salt and pepper, we grind them fresh, so that's what I'm talking about. 10 grinds is 10 twists, three grinds is three twists. Once it's all together, I put it in the sun oven for between two and three hours. Of course, it's gonna depend on the day, but the point is for the flavors to simmer and blend together nicely. And that was it for day one. We let the sauce refrigerate overnight to blend further. For the casserole, we're going to need some corn tortillas. And I feel certain that if you like store-bought corn tortillas, okay, you could use them. I prefer to make my own. And the secret is you have to have the right corn flour. This is the masa harina that I like. There's a recipe right on the package that works fine, but I like this one better. This is what I used. The amount of water seems to me to vary from day to day, so you just have to feel for it. And the other tricky thing is that kneading and letting the dough rest a little bit helps it hold together. Since I'm using a square casserole, I wanted to make square tortillas, which did work pretty well. I'm working on a silicon mat, so I should have been able to peel this square right into the casserole. I think though my first try I had been too skimpy with water. Start out with a thin layer of the homemade sauce in the bottom of the baking dish. Then a tortilla layer. Mine crumbled up but it didn't really harm the dish. Then another sauce layer. You could certainly make your refried beans a day ahead in the sun oven but on this occasion I used store-bought vegetarian refried beans and that's the next layer that goes in. Next, another sauce layer. For the second tortilla layer, I added some more water, kneaded it a little bit longer, and it rolled out much more smoothly. I was able to flip the mat over on top of the casserole and peel it off as intended. The last of the sauce goes on top of the second tortilla layer. And smooth it out and top it with grated cheese. We used six ounces of pepper jack cheese here. We put it on and then put the whole thing in the oven, but we just heated it hot enough to eat. If you wanted to get it really steamy hot in the middle, I would recommend putting the cheese on for the last 20 minutes only. In other words, the casserole would then go in the sun oven cheeseless until you thought it was really good and hot and then put the cheese on to melt. On this occasion, we put it in the sun oven as is. The sun oven was not preheated. We cooked it about 40 minutes and it was hot through and the cheese melted, just not steaming, scalding. But everything's really pre-cooked, so it's entirely fine this way. And boy, it was delicious. This time I only used the spices that I already showed you in the recipe. Next time, I think it still needs a little something. 
I'm going to add some Mexican oregano. It's similar to the Italian version, but a little bit smokier or something. Here's the plant from my garden. Another possibility I think that might add just the zest I'm looking for is the epizote herb. 